live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is Wednesday, the 28th of February, 2018. It's the end of February, the last day of February. So, guys, welcome, 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 welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Wendy Dearborn, and I will be your host for the next 60, possibly 90 minutes. And my co-host is Olivia Lashley, coming to you live from London in the UK. So, guys, today's show is It's Not What You Know, It's Who You Know, isn't it? And I, I actually think this is very pertinent. I, I, one of the residents of Shade Tree, we were talking, and she sort of said this to to one of the other ladies who were there, and it kind of it kind of hit home. It, it really it really it resonated with me, which is actually why I sort of created a show around this. But anyway, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, wherever you are in the world. Um, you know, this show is about me. It's about you. It's about us. It's about All of us creating the lives that we want to live through the power of our conscious choice and our our choice, our conscious choice, and using our conscious choice to make choices that are in in the best interest of self. So my thing is, use your mind, use your thoughts to create the life that you want to live. Do this consciously so that you can live the way in which you truly want to live and not kind of wake up one day and like, oh my God. How did I get here? You know, why is my life like this? Make different choices. So that being said, Liz, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Oh, you know, love, I'm all right. I'm all right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, um, it's a little chilly here, to say the least. But <laughs> I, know, I know we just had this conversation a little while ago, and there, there, there is limited sympathy. When I mentioned snow at the... Um, you know, at Prim or State Line, Prim they call it these days, right? At Prim, and I, I realised that I, I got a, I think the word is a modicum of um, sympathy, but outside of that, you just couldn't care less. It took my, it took my niece to say to you, no, Mum, when I was there, I had to buy some warm clothes uh, for I you to understand that it gets I cold. Don't. I bet it gets chilly here too. Well, I mean, I think our oh, your chili is not. Do you know? You know it's our, it's our do, you know, do you know what's really sad about how this, how we're hooked up on the telephone? Before this, <laughs> I would have just your ass on mute, right? But I can't do that now because if I mute you, I mute me. <laughs> so before I would just let you talk, you'd have been on mute. And I would have peeked in to listen, peeked in to listen. And when you were done, I would have just gone on. But yes, yes, anyway, so that's that. So outside of that, darling, all's good in your world? Yeah, 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 not too bad. It's, it's okay. going, put it that way, yeah. Yeah, 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 I hear you, darling, I hear you. I mean, it's like today is the last day of February. Can you believe two months oh. into 2018 already? And it's, it's just, it, and, and it's a wonderful thing, you know, because I'm experiencing it, the flyby. I'm experiencing it in it, and... I I felt I feel a little bit like I'm hanging on to 28 as it just drags into, into March <laughs> and you know my legs are kicked up and I'm just fl- I'm flying along with it but you know it, it it is it is what it is it is what it is but you know outside of that darling anyway in my world it's it's all good it's definitely all good and moving moving forward moving forward so guys today we're talking about it's not what you know it's who you know isn't it and that really is the question. And as I said to you um, a short while ago, one of the women who are residents, they're residents in Shaytree, and that's a, a local homeless shelter for, or shelter for women, children, and pets. We were talking, I was doing a class, I do a weekly, I, I do, actually I do a weekly talk, I don't do a class, I do a weekly talk. And at the end of the talk, um, you know, the ladies were filing out and I was at the table getting my stuff together and she said, she was talking to somebody else, one of the other residents, and she said, you know, it's not it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's what she actually said. And I said, isn't it? And and that's how, how the show came about because, uh, as I'll read the synopsis, for those of you um, on the journey of finding self, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And sometimes that 
is a cold, hard fact. Um, in truth, it is not who you know. It's how you apply what you know to your experience of consciously manifesting what it is that you want in your life. Actually, I need to highlight that because I'm going to come back to that point. Um, it's about consciously, yeah, consciously manifesting what you want in your life. You can have all the knowledge in the world, yet if it is not applied in the right way, it's just knowledge. And as I have here in the synopsis, and I really mean this, you know, it's a little like it says in, in Scripture, it's faith without work or inspired action is dead. So you can have all the faith that you want in the world. But if you don't have the inspired action that leads you to belief, or you don't do the work that sustains your belief, instead, it's just faith. It's not anything that's going to come into realization or manifestation for you. The saying, it's not what you know, but it's who you know, for many is a fact. The vast majority of people around the world are living their lives like this and don't even realize it. And as a result, they continuously experience cyclic detriment. And I'll come back to that in a hot second. All right, cyclic detriment. Life's good for a while, and then kaboom, they appear to be back to, uh, to square one, or back at square one, whichever way that sounds right. But they, uh, they appear to be back at square one. They're standing in the rubble, and they're kind of wondering what the hell happened. They are living a life that is one of total dependency or inequi inequability, interdependence on others for their success. And I will come back to that also because there's, there's nothing wrong with getting assistance. But when you're living that way, it, it becomes a problem. People have taken the people have taken and cloaked themselves in the belief that someone can do what they feel they cannot do for themselves in order for their success. So hopefully that makes sense. And it's the proverbial, they're always looking for a hookup. The man who knows, the man who knows, the man who knows, the man that can get you to the man who knows the man so you can get what you need. People are looking for the hookup, and that's what I mean. The person who has that inside track, you know, they're, they're on the inside. The, the, the one who has the king or the queen's ear. The belief held is only with him or her on your side or with them on your side that your dreams will become a reality. So for me, you see, guys, it's not what you know. It's, uh, excuse me, it's not what you know. It's all about who you know. And the king or queen that you need to know is self. The person's ear that you need to have is your own. You are your own hookup. You are the man or the woman or the man or the woman that knows the man that knows the woman that knows the man that can get you to the man that knows the woman or knows the man to get you what you need. And God knows that you have the inside track on your dream and your reality. And when I say God knows, I'm talking about your God self, your higher self. You have the inside track. You have that hookup. You have that communication. So for me, it does boil down to what you know. It also boils down to who you know. It boils down to how you are using it. It's how you are choosing to use these cold, hard facts about self. These cold, hard facts that really and truly materialize into universal laws or spiritual laws. That's what it boils down to. So, Liz, were you going to say something? Please. Um. <laughs> no, I wasn't. But um, yeah, I, I I actually agree with you in some respects. In another one, I don't. Um, I agree that it's about knowing self. You're the who you know. 
It's not who you know. It's not what you know. You're the who of who you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you're the who, who of who you know. Because the people, the, the places, the things, um, and the people that are in your existence or in your life are there because they exist. You know, they wouldn't be, say, like, talking to you if you mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. existed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in some way we have to realise that we're actually allowing people into our macrosphere. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we are... We need to be our own who, but then I think we also need to be our own what, yeah? Yeah, we, yeah. We need, we need to be our own who and we need to be our own what because um, we need to know that um, where the power comes from. Mm-hmm. And if the power is coming from you, you're the what, aren't you? Yeah? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, and I think the phrase is being taken literally you know the who the who the what the who is um external they're looking for an, it's something external exactly, to Liz. them as exactly. opposed to something that's internal exactly. but i mean they're both they're both the self exactly yeah so so it is who for me it is who you know and what you know about who you know Mm-hmm. But it's not about the external. No, no, it's about you, because, the internal place or thing that comes into your ra- reality is only there because you are. The end. I take it that was yeah. the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that, that was the, the end. The end. Okay. All right. All right. No, and I, and I agree. So, what didn't you agree with? What, what? Because you were saying, because um, you said um, it's not who you know. Is it who you know or what you know? And I think you said it's only, that's what I heard, is only um, who you know. So I, my thing was, I do believe also it's what you it's know. What, yeah. It's yes, what yes, you yes, know yes, about yes. who. Yeah. How you apply. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about when I first started, when I first said. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I came out and then I, I switched gears automatically when I mm. said in truth, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but yes, no, I agree. You know, well, for me, at any rate, you are the what and the who. And it's an internal job because we're always saying that. We are always saying that, that your life is an internal um, relation. It's an internal creative process with an external manifestation. And without doing the internal work and I think recognizing that really and truly as you said Olivia everything that you create or everything that is in your reality everything that you bring into your macrosphere or everything that is in your macrosphere you have brought it in there it can only get in there you know like if you open your front door flies can only fly in if you've got the door open, um, which, you know, to, to a certain degree, there's, there's truth to that. Actually, and I'm going to segue. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to segue, all right? Do you know, I was thinking, um, you know, because I've done, done my retreat, and mm-hmm. I, I, was mm-hmm. think, I was thinking about the process of things uh, degenerating, like, like mm-hmm. um, uh, bio, biological things, at any rate, mm-hmm. degenerating. And... I thought to myself, it's amazing that we are created, not just the physical body, but the the physical, I'll use the physical body, actually. We are created in such a way that we eventually disintegrate and turn into something different. I mean, you, you think about the body as it literally decomposes the changes it goes through. You know, uh, you you you'll have that when the bacteria start to form, and this and that, like like it just it just it, it literally it, it kind of turns in on itself and it eats itself away. But in the process, it creates different, you know, like flies and you know maggots and flies and this and that and yada 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 until even until the bone literally bleaches itself out. And eventually turns to dust. And I, I was thinking to myself how amazing it is that all things do that, including, and we've said this before on the show, including a house 
or a building that has been left empty. It, de- it goes back to whence it came. It degenerates and goes back. It, it um, decomposes and goes back. And that in itself is life force. Don't ask me why I got off on that tangent. Something, something that um, I said, you said, took me on that tangent, so let me rein myself in. Do you know why I went on that tangent? Uh, uh, no, I have no idea. I, 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 no, longer, I no longer try and second guess. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I know. I know I said I was going, because usually I can, I can weave it back into where I'm going, but mm. for, some, for some reason or another, uh, anyway, I will say this, for some reason or another, that is something that was really um, profound. It, it was really um, on point for me this weekend. The mm. fact that everything is energy and it, it's cyclic. Everything is energy and it's so cyclic. Because uh, when, when, when you think about it, everything goes back to making the whole, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Everything yes, goes back to making that. the whole. And mm. supporting that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and that's what it's about. It, it's it's about supporting that. Um, it's a different. It's a, it's a different take on a, a leg, leaving a legacy, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Because nothing actually ever dies. Mm. Nothing ever dies. It just as as I say on the show frequently, it just moves into form and out of form. It moves into a different form. You know, you think about the body, or if you think about vegetables or meat, or something, it just you know cheese. Um, it just moves into a different form. It just moves into a different form. Um, but anyway, moving back to this, uh, what we're talking about is it's not what you know, it's who you know, isn't it? And one of the reasons why I phrase it that way is because what you know and who you know, for me, are important um, as an external. But as Olivia was saying, the thing that trumps all of that is what you know and who you know in regard to your inner self and your inner working. And, guys, this, this is one thing that is, I, I think, um, I don't know, a, 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 a burning, like a burning passion with me is that people try to understand that, as we said, okay, I'm getting back on track here now, um, that when you use that within your macrosphere, within your life, within, within the life that you're living, where you find yourself currently in this moment, and this is not to say that what's happening to you is right, wrong, or indifferent. It's not condoning anything that's happened to you, to your family, to your loved ones, etc. But what I am saying is simply this, that what you have chosen to do, the choices that you have made, whether you felt that these have been made under duress and or not, the choices that you have made have put you and placed you where you are today. That doesn't mean that your choice is right, wrong, or indifferent. Hey, that's an emotional call. What I'm saying is what has happened to you could not have happened to you unless you were there. How did you get there? And whichever way you slice it, whether you were taken there, whether what happened, how did you get to the point where then you were taken? Where were you? And again, it is not condoning anything that has been perpetrated against you, your family, your person, your loved one, your country, your people, your church. That's not it. When, when I actually, and when Olivia says things like this, it's about thinking beyond the scope of where you are thinking. It's about thinking outside of the emotional connotations that you have, thinking outside of the, 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 the anger, the pain, the this. It's looking beyond that. You know, in our coaching, in our coaching practice, um, for both Olivia and myself, one of, one of the questions that we ask when, when people are in what we call an emotional wash, and an emotional wash is not is somebody who's not able to... Um, to, to, to really see beyond, they really hurt my feelings, and they keep coming back to that. They really hurt my feelings. They really hurt my feelings. They really hurt my feelings. And one of the questions is that we ask is, when you look, what does it look like to look beyond your hurt feelings? 
What do you see on the other side of your hurt feelings? What do you see beyond that? What do you see? What does it feel like? What do you hear? And many people will actually make the leap. And they'll say, well, I see myself getting on with my life, or I see myself free of pain, and I see myself... And from there, you can work. You can work forward. So where I'm, where I'm going with this, with what I just said, is this. It's about looking and seeing and feeling and using your imagination to tell yourself what it feels like beyond where you are now. And actually, when you're able to do that, that means that you've already gone there. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. It means that you've already gone there and the possibility for you to live in that new reality within your imagination is gone beyond the possibility. It is now a reality should you choose to walk that path. So does, did that make sense, Liv? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one of the things, um, I can't remember exactly what you said, but I had just been jotting down um, that uh, people um, try... <laughs> you're done you're done you're done right people try to understand <laughs> their external world in relation to their emotions in relation to their emotions mm-hmm. instead of trying to know their own power instead of trying to understand their internal that that that, that they have the internal power to create everything in their reality so they're looking at the end result as opposed to the beginning, the mm-hmm. beginning. So, so in many ways, they're kind of like missing the processing part. Yes. They're missing the, the, the ability to say, okay, well, in actual fact, this is what I want to happen, as opposed to just looking at what we're looking at, because you're looking at the end result mm-hmm. instead, of, instead of actually the internal thing, that, um, the choice, the, the ability to make the choices that you want to see in your reality. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Totally. 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 You see, guys, uh, look, what, one of the things, uh, and uh, Liz, I don't know, I don't know why, and you know I'm not huge on why, as it were. The, the mechanism for this, you know, pe- people are truly, truly hooked on the, the, the belief that it's somebody else that has to to bring them through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, they're locked onto this thing that, you know, if I don't have this person in my life or I don't have um, this person doing this or that, it's not going to work. And I don't know where that comes from. I, I think it comes from, you know, you're born, you have your parents, your parents look after you, and they tell you yes, no, don't know, blah blah mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And you come out of that, and what, they come out of that, and then you start going to school, and you have exactly the same thing. And you start mm-hmm. working, you have exactly the same thing. You're in a relationship, you get married, you have exactly the same thing. And um, I think we don't get a chance to 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 find out who we are. So I think that's why people fall fall back onto that, Wendy, because okay. we haven't had a chance in a, a, in many ways to actually mature. Mm-hmm. We're never allowed. We're all sort of like in stasis. We're, we're, we're we, you know we're not growing. We're not growing older. We're not growing younger. We're just kind of like there. Well, I think that's once we get to a particular age, um, because we just we we we've never we've we've always been led by the nose. So mm-hmm. therefore we. We always remain children. You and know. so, so, so um, what, what I'm hearing you say is that there's never really been any any training to sort of um, uh, to, to really recognise how, as you said, Olivia, to, to feel what you would say, how powerful you are, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that it's an intrinsic thing, and that power can be parlayed into creating what you want in in life. And, I, and I, guys, I recognize that there are people who will come along who will assist and support you. However, you are the creative force behind what's going on in your life, not them. You know, because if they don't bring a piece of the puzzle, something else is going to come up. Something else, you, you will do something else. And this is what happens in life. So 
I, I, I just, I, 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 again, I know we're not raised, we're not raised that way. People aren't being given those tools. It's really funny, you know, because, um, you know, my little play daughter, uh, she, she's been asking me this, blah, that, and the other. And my thing is, what do you think? You 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 you're getting ready. You're getting ready to be cut loose, honey. You, you know, in in six six months' time, babe, you're 18. At your age, I dread to think what I dread to tell you what some of the stuff I was doing at your age, at 17 and a half. You know, I've gone on about my business. You know what I mean? And you no, know, seriously, you know what I mean, Liz. You know, I've gone on about my business. You know, and so and and then most of the people I know too. You know how mm. I came on. You know, you know, you 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 realize now at my age, I still realize how young I was and didn't know a damn. Well, that's not. Mm. True. I realized how young I was, but you know, I've gone about a big woman doing my thing. You know, don't tell me nothing. What you gotta tell me? You you can't <laughs> tell me that. Hang on, tell me. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> right, gone on about my business. You know, and and, and do you. Do you know when that really put how young um, I was and how young we were was really put in check to me when Rosemary made her transition? Because mm. I never forget, I was like, but she's just a baby. Mm. She's just a baby. She's just a, in the grand scheme mm. of life. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you, if you will, three scores and ten. She's just, just a baby. And so, mm. anyway, I was saying to little one, as I call her, I was saying to little one, what, what do you want to do? Mm. And she said, well, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, if you're unsure and you need clarity, one, you need to know what you need clarity on, and and two, run it by your mum. Run it by your mum. It's good you can bounce off of me, but you need to run this by your mum. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. And as I said to her, you're going to have to start making choices for yourself. And in order to make choices, you need clarity around what you want. In order to get clarity around what you want, you're going to have to do the work to think about it. It's going to be something, it has to be something that rings and resonates with you. You know, is this what you're really wanting? Well, no, then don't do it. If you can, if you can, and and this is something that I say to people frequently, you know, uh, the, the other day I, I asked somebody, um, you know, do do you want to marry, they were in the office, this man. And they were silent. And so then I interjected, until you say yes, you understand it's a no. <laughs> right? Just so we're all on the same page. Until you say yes, it's a no. And that's the thing. When you ask yourself any question, when you ask yourself any question until you have said categorically yes, it's a no. If you ask yourself a question and you don't answer, but you act on the question that you have asked, you have just said it's a yes. You might not have verbally said that, but your actions have said it. You know, this is why people people use that phrase, you know, actions speak louder than words. And there's truth to that. There's, there, there's truth to that. You know, I, I, it, it, again, I, I think that um, it, it's important that for you guys listening, for the listening audience, for you guys listening out there, that you take time out take even if it's take time out once a week or you take time out once a day or once a month take time out to explore what it is that you truly want you see you could go outside of self looking for something and this happens so this this you go outside of self looking for something And thinking somebody else can help you to find this thing that you think that you're looking for or that you are looking for, not that you think, that you're looking for. And you wind up being used and abused. Or at least you feel used and abused. But you see, the feeling of being used and abused 
is you showing yourself a direction which you need to go in. And we come back full circle. We come back full circle. You can only show you. Your life is happening for you, not to you. And when you stand in that empowerment, when you embrace that to its fullest, your life will take on a whole different connotation. You know, I was saying to the ladies, um, again, here, here with, it's, what, it, it, it's not what you know, it's who you know, isn't it? Here we go. Telling the ladies, and I might have told you this, this list, I, I think I told you this, I'm not 100% sure, uh, about when I was in the shower the other day. And I was having a moaning groan, right? I was, I was, oh yeah, 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 all all distressed, you know, because whatever, whatever happens, and I'm like, and I'm not. This isn't typically who I am, but it tells me where I was in the process of what has happened to me, and I was like, I don't understand why this has happened to me, and I literally, I went out self outside of self. Even when I said, oh, God, why is this happening to me? I wasn't doing my usual internal dialogue with my God self. Because, you see, quiet as it's kept, guys, I believe that I am a God. Be under no no illusion. I know my heritage. I know from whence I came. But I went outside of self. I'm like, God, you know, kind of looking around and all tearfully, why is this happening to me? And I literally heard, as I usually do, right side, I literally heard, this isn't happening to you. Well, that's not exactly what was said, but it's not happening to you. You are being shown. Oh, stop crying and everything. I said, well, you could have told me that before, is it? <laughs> I was like, I was being shown, okay? And I'm like, okay, all right, Wendy, you stepped outside of self. You were looking for answers outside of self. And as a result, you were being shown yourself by everything that unfolded. Now you need to go back inside of self and recognize that it's not who you know, And it's not what you know. It's how you apply all of this from an internal perspective. Did that make sense, Liv? I'm going to do a journey. I'm sorry, yes. (laughs) Yes, it did make sense, yes. I was just getting ready. Olivia! (laughs) (laughs) I was getting ready to go there. I was like, I was cranking it up. I was getting ready to go there. Um, But yes, it's, it's... it's, it's vitally important. It's vitally important. You know, and again, what's his name? Um, Zig Ziglar. And for those of you who really know, know me, it's very rare. Outside of um, the Bible, um, some stuff from Ernest Holmes, Florence Grove's Shin, most of the stuff is metaphysical and or spiritual. I'll get our quote from. It's very rare that I quote from people. Um, but no, I'm seriously. I, I just no, you, don't. Said it with, you said the word people with disdain. <laughs> no, it's very rare. I, I, I just don't, you know. It, it For me, invariably, I'll read something about that. That's good. Uh, but I'll think, well, that's your thought process and where you were at the time. And it's really wonderful. And yes, I see, yada, yada, yada. But it's very rare in my writing. That That's why when I was writing, I, I digress here. I, I need to put this. So I know where I'm at. That's why, why when I was writing um, not only my, my, my thesis, right, and not only that, my, my dissertation, it was so challenging for me because they want you to quote all these people that you've read and all of this. And my whole thing is that's their perspective. Why do I need their perspective to back up what I believe? And you know what? Something said, self said, well, if you want this piece of paper, that's how they play that game. I was like, <laughs> okay. Which, which, is, which is another thing. You know, when you're playing in somebody's sandbox, 
Is there sand in it? Is there bog? Is there something that you want from the bog? From being in there? That's the way it goes. But anyway, and I don't. Sorry, quote. sorry. Can I just make it's actually your sand and your box because you've created the reality. Yeah, anyway, right. Zig Ziglar, <laughs> where I was going with this, Zig Ziglar said, and I have to read this, um, Zig Ziglar, who actually was, um, he, wound his, he, he, wound his up, he wound up being, uh, I would say, a really good, for me, he went beyond a motivational speaker. Tony Robbins is a motion, motivational speaker. Zig Ziglar, for me, was somebody who was an inspirational speaker. And for me, there's a marked difference. There's a marked difference. An inspirational speaker speaks to you to inspire you so you can do all that you can do. A motivational speaker tends to keep you hooked on their line. Sorry, no, 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 that's what, that's what I'm with you. Right, so Zig Ziglar said, repetition is the mother of learning, the father of action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. And so, I am saying this, I'm saying that to say this, as I had pointed out in my blog of, I would say, stopping the challenging behavior of believing you need somebody external to yourself, who knows somebody external to yourself who knows what you need and knows who you need in order for you to get what you need, it's vitally important that you understand the role that you play in the manifestation process. You see, for me, the fundamental um, problem that most people are experiencing, I'm not saying all, but most or many people are experiencing with consciously manifesting on a continuous basis what they want, not just manifesting randomly. It works sometimes, it doesn't. Most often it doesn't. You get a few who are really good manifestors and they've got this, this thing down, but they don't actually know what they're doing. They, 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 just, they use the pattern that they've had before, but they don't actually understand the pattern, which is cool. I guess as long as it's working. That being said, the fundamental problem that many, many people all over the world are experiencing with consciously manifesting what they want and want for their life is one, they're focused on the how. And yes, this is what I'm talking about with the repetition. Repetition is the mother of learning, the father of action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. Zig Ziglar said this, and I, that, that resonates with me. You, you're, focus, you're focusing on the how. How are you going to get your desired manifestation come into re- reality? Are not focused on receiving the reality of your manifestation. And guys, those are those two things create what they call this thing here. Um, the uh, the oh, it'll come to me in a minute. It's the Grand Canyon. There you go. Big old a split in the in the earth, right? It will create your own personal Grand Canyon. It will create within you. Those two things, having them, they're like opposing poles. And there are you, you're, you're, you're in the valley trying to make it work. Really and truly, the above statement, and I said this in the blog. You, you can find the blog on, on my website. I, I, I said this in the blog. The above statement, A, you're focused on how you're going to get your desired manifestation come into reality. B, you are not focused on receiving the reality of your manifestation. The above statements illustrate two different mindsets. A, suggests that you are working to make your manifestation a belief in your mind. B, suggests that you already believe what it is that you want to manifest and you're preparing to receive it in because of your belief in a tangible form. Once again, the vast majority of people are living their life like A. They're focused on how 
they're going to get, that they want to manifest, to become a reality. They're focused on the how. And where I was going with this whole repetition thing was this. You need to know your role in your manifestation process. You need to know the role that you play. You need to know the role that the architectural um, universal creator plays. You need to know whom your chosen God plays. You need to know the deity within you, what role the deity plays. You need to know your role in the manifestation process. You need to understand what's going on in your sandbox. It's your sandbox. This is your game of life. You are being dealt X, Y, Z cards, and we are all dealt the same number of cards, all in how we play it. If you don't know how, if if you don't know how, it's what I meant right here, if you don't know how, how do you, if you don't know, how do you expect to win every time? Okay, right. If you don't know how to play in your sandbox, how do you really expect to win every time? Or for you, life, the way that it is unfolding in a hit and miss fashion, is that working for you? Is that working for you? You see, at the end of the day, you are the what in your manifestation process. When somebody looks at me, no, you're seeing the what. And not what less. You're seeing the what. You're seeing the what in the manifestation process. What you are looking at is the divine creative energy. And you need to understand that the divine creative energy is the how in truth and honesty. As, as I'm doing the thing here, you are the what in your manifestation process. The divine creative energy is the how in the creative process. Your creative manifestation process, it's yours, but you need to understand the different aspects of you. You see, if people understood how powerful they are, if people understood the term, the term, ye are God, boy, this would be a different world. This would be a different world. If people understood the power of their spoken word, the words send out a frequency, and that frequency, as I'm always saying, cannot and will not be returned to you void. Be careful that which you speak. Because it's manifesting, or as they say, it's manifesting as you speak. And that's another thing. You know, they say, um, uh, there's a phrase uh, before, I can't remember what it is. Uh, uh, let's, let me think this. Is there anything that you want to say while I'm thinking of this phrase? I'm going to do a turny A on you. I'm sorry. No, I was answering you. <laughs> um, no, I, there isn't. Um, no, there isn't really. I'm, 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 I was actually thinking about, there was something you said, so I was just um, um, jotting some notes down, but it's not random. It's not It's not, It's not. not um, relevant to what we're talking about okay. at all. All right, all right. Um, there, there's a phrase, I can't remember what it is, Liv, um, but it's like before before you can before you call, um, I will come, or before you ask, you will receive. And what that phrase actually means is that if you believe it and you truly believe it, before it leaves your mouth, it's already been manifested. Before it leaves your mouth, the manifestation process has already taken place. What might be a time-consuming thing for us is that it doesn't come back in a timely fashion. And sometimes we actually need to reposition ourselves so that we can receive it. This is why it's so important, guys, to know who you are and to know what you are. You see, it's not what you know, it's who you know, isn't it? Guys, it's all the above. 
as I said before, you are the king and queen or the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. It all starts with you. It all starts with you. It all ends with you. The middle bit is you. It is all you. That alone, that alone, for me, it has to have some kind of import in your life. And you know, what, what, what just came to me, Liz, is that for some people that could be really, really scary, you know? Mm. That could be really, really, really scary. Mm. Mm. I think you're right. It could be really scary because that means there is no, there's no um, get out of jail card free or, you know, go past, past you know, what's it? Go, go past jail and collect $50 or £50 away, right? <laughs> there's, there's no card like that. It's all you. It's you, lock, stock, and barrel. But it always will be you. With or without the support, it will still be you. If the support moves and you fall down and you're laying down, it's you who is laying down. So once again, you are the what in your manifestation process. The divine creative energy is the how in the creative process, your creative manifestation. So my thing is, guys, instead of going outside of self try to, uh, and trying to get the hookup to make life happen for you, my thing is go inside of yourself and ask yourself for divine right action or inspired action to be given to you. You see, there's a higher you. There's a God self. You are a part. You are a part of the creative um, energy that makes up the world. You're a part of that. You, that's inescapable. You cannot get away from that. That's how powerful you are. Why would you believe anything else? Why would you believe anything else? So I simply say, go inside and ask yourself this question. The next time something really comes up, and I mean the next time something comes up and you feel that your back's to the wall and you, you need somebody else to answer this question for you or you need somebody else who knows somebody or blah, blah, all of that stuff, take a deep breath. Own your life. Stand in your power and ask, and I mean literally ask, what is it that I need to do next? And because Wendy is Wendy, I'm like, I need a clear and concise sign. I don't want anything where I'm going to have to decipher it. I want a clear and concise sign, one that cannot be, one that I, one that I cannot mistake for anything other than what it is. And guys, as I said in my blog, it's truly as simple as that. It becomes more complex sometimes <laughs> when you receive your, your, your inspired directive and it becomes more complex than that because, no, you understand categorically what you are being told not what you're being told to do, because you have choice. You, be, you, you understand categorically. But you see, if, it, if it's not in your comfort zone, and sometimes if it doesn't register with past experience or something that you can literally align yourself with, chances are you're going to try and sabotage yourself. And you'll sabotage yourself by not taking your right action. You see, again, life is all about choices. Choose whether or not you invoke the first law in the laws of attraction, which is choice. You get to choose. You get to choose. So you get to choose what it is that you will and will not do. So, Liz, is there anything that you'd like to... Because uh, I could hear you writing. Yeah, it's um, actually not about... This is something I want to discuss with you after. Something that you said, it really... It, I just got a flood of information. So, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
So what, what I'll say with this, guys, um, and as we wind down, because this show is actually going to be an hour. Um, what I'll say with this, guys, in, in parting is this. It's vitally important to understand that in our, in, in, in being reared, in being raised, whether through, I'm going to say nurture. I'm not going to necessarily say nature. But in, in nurture, we have been taught that everything has to be warm and fuzzy and, you know, have the little cherry on top and all of this jazz. And as a result, we walk through life with those blinders on. Now, nature has a way of creating its own anesthetic. Now, I've never had any children, but I do know, like from my sisters, etc., that yes, while childbirth was painful, to say that they remember it as a full, on false memory recall, would you say that's true, Liz? No, definitely not. No. You, you don't. You, no, you don't. You, you don't. don't. Remember. I mean, but with Davina, I mean, I didn't even have anaesthetic. Okay, all right. So, oh, no, and I don't. That's why she's so feisty. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and, and you see, you see, Liz, and, and that's it. Nature has its own anaesthetic. Yeah, you remember, it's like, you know, another woman might say, and you're like, yeah, it's okay, baby, suck it up. You, you'll be okay at the end of the day. You won't even remember and once, once they're done and they're looking at the baby, you look at the baby, is the baby all right? Because that's the first thing that's in your head. Let me see. You know, does she have all her or he have all his fingers, toes? It is everything there that needs to be there. And you're, you're on another track. You are totally on another track. And that is nature. Nurture has taught us to believe that things like childbirth, are meant to be painless as opposed to we can try to make you as comfortable as possible. That's what nurture has done. And as a result, uh, we raise our children and we have been raised to believe that, you know, you're not going to feel the pains and the this and the that. Or, or if you do, people pat you on your head or pat you on the back or what have you, and tell you, no, you'll be all right, you'll get over it, which is true. That's nature. But as a result of being uh, raised this way, we feel that every intuitive or um, insightful directive is going to fill us with the warm and fuzzies, when in fact, many of those fill us with trepidation and to a certain degree, fear. And yet at our intrinsic level, at an intrinsic level, at our inner core, we know to ourselves that that directive, that insight, and insight is information from, and it's accurate information from, sources unknown, that insight that we have been given, the small voice that said to me, you're being shown. All, all of that is accurate. We've received it. It's accurate. Although it might not seem right, but it is right. And the right action that you need to take must be the action that has been a directive of that if you want your life to manifest in the way in which you want it to manifest. You see, guys, once you have asked, it will be given to you. If you are looking, you will find it. If you start kicking down doors, you will, if you start knocking down doors, doors will be open to you. So for all of you out there, this is, it. I don't care where you are in the world, you will receive. If you are looking, you will find. And of course, if you knock, the doors will be open. I am not saying that what you seek and find you'll like. I'm not saying 
that what you what 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 the, when the door opens, what is behind the door that you'll like. I'm not saying what you receive, you'll like it. But what I am saying is that if you have done any of the above and things have come back based on the emotion, based on the emotion that you have set forth, it is the right thing. So, guys, you've asked, you've looked, you've found, you've been given. My thing is walk through the door and create the steps. And, excuse me, walk through the door, the door you have created, and step into your manifestation. You see, and that's the part, that's part B. That's you being focused on receiving the reality of your manifestation. Step into it. Stop, stop dancing around it. Step into it. Step into it. The other thing that I'll say real quick as, as we'll close, in the, the teachings of the universal laws of attraction, much of the teaching that is out there, and I'm not talking about the old, old school, you know, like Florence Grovel Shin and Wallace Wattles and Prentice Mulford and the, the people whom people are now taking their work and remolding it. I'm not talking, I'm, I'm talking about these people who are remolding the work and not giving you the truth. They're not giving you the truth, guys. Because they'll tell you to visualize what you want. You have to see it. No, you have to be it. You have to be it. You can't just see it. That might be a process, but you have to be it. You have to be it. There's so many things that the nuance is they're out there, and you haven't been given. And so people, people are always saying, yeah, well, this law of attraction stuff don't work. No, it, because you, you have only half of the puzzle. You, you, you only have half, half of the cooking, cooking supplies. You're not going to get a pound cake. So that being said, guys, it's not who you know. So it's not what you know. It's who you know, isn't it? Yes, guys, it is who you know. You need to know you. What you know, you need to know you. It's about you. It's all about you. The what and the who is you. So, Liz, is there anything that you'd like to say? No, there isn't, Wins. No. All right. All right. Well, I'll call you after then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, guys, on the, on that note, thank you for listening, and we will be back most probably next week. And until mm-hmm. that until that time, guys, love you guys, love you, sis, and okay, we love you too, you too. Bye. Right then. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. She's in London. I'm in Las Vegas.